The specific purpose of this video is to provide you with several tips on how quickly and effectively memorizing a speech or presentation can be, whether you're a student, a professional, a public speaker, or just someone who wants to improve their communication skills for a family event. I'm Stephen Walters, and joining me is my esteemed guest and friend, Matt DeMaio. He's an expert in providing you with powerful mental strategies, tactics, and techniques that enable you to be smarter faster than you ever dreamed possible. Before Matt provides us with his special techniques, let's dive into nine quick tips that will help you master the art of speech memorization. Tip number one, the power of memorization. Memorizing a speech can boost your confidence and help you deliver a polished presentation. When you know your material inside and out, you can focus on engaging with your audience and making a lasting impression. Tip number two, the pitfall of over-memorization. Over-memorizing can make your speech sound robotic and unnatural. To avoid this, practice delivering your speech with a conversational tone and varying your pacing and intonation. Tip number three, use mnemonic devices. Mnemonic devices like acronyms or visual imagery can help you remember key points in your speech. This is gonna make it easier to recall information during your presentation and keep your audience engaged. In fact, when your listeners stay tuned to the end, that's exactly what I'm going to be teaching on. The very best mnemonic technique that has literally thousands of years behind it in the very best way to memorize a speech. Tip number four, beware of memory lapses. Relying too heavily on memorization can backfire if you forget a part of your speech. Hmm. Oh, to prevent this, have a backup plan, such as an outline or note cards to help you stay on track if you lose your place. So speaking of outlines, rather than using eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, which make noise in the microphone and rattle all over and, and are a distraction, use note cards. First of all, they fit very comfortably into a lady's purse or into a gentleman's jacket pocket. And you can number them so that you don't get out of place and they make a great prop to make a point. Tip number five, practice makes perfect. Rehearsing your speech multiple times will help you internalize the content and improve your delivery. Record yourself and watch the playback to identify areas that need improvement. In addition to maybe watching yourself on a video where you may be self-conscious, I recommend that you stand in front of a full length mirror. Wear the same clothes that you're gonna wear when you give your presentation, just like an actor or actress does in dress rehearsal. And then when you're watching yourself in the mirror, if you need to change something, you can do so instantly rather than having to wait until you look back at it on video. Tip number six, the importance of flexibility. Being able to adopt your speech on the fly is crucial. If you notice that your audience is losing interest or if something unexpected happens, be prepared to adjust your content or your delivery to keep them engaged. Tip number seven, connect with your audience. Memorizing your speech can free up mental bandwidth to focus on connecting with your audience. Make eye contact, use gestures, and respond to audience reactions to create a more engaging experience. When you're using eye contact, be careful that you don't engage any individual member of the audience for too long. If somebody feels that they're being stared at, it makes them very uncomfortable and the audience will turn against you. If you're standing towards the right side of the stage, force your gaze over to the left side of the audience. And then if you're on the left side of the stage, put your gaze on the right side of the audience. So the people who are physically close to you because you're on that side of the stage will feel connected to you, but also the ones that you're looking cross court because you're looking at them, they'll also feel connected to you. Tip number eight, don't neglect the Q&A. If your presentation includes a Q&A session, be prepared to answer questions without relying on memorization. This is going to demonstrate your expertise and ability to think on your feet. Rather than just doing a Q&A, because sometimes people are hesitant or self-conscious about asking a question, you can also phrase it, this will be a great time to answer questions, but you can also talk about your key takeaways. And you'll find that audience members are more likely to engage with you because they'll talk about something that they learned or that they picked up from your speech. And that gives you a great place to add more content. Tip number nine, balance memorization and improvisation. Find a balance between memorizing your speech and being able to improvise. This is gonna help you deliver a polished presentation while still sounding natural and engaging. Which leads me to the things that I wanted to talk about, 
which are how to memorize your presentation point by point rather than word for word. I have a, a little bit of history on how this technique came about. This is the ultimate speech memorization technique. And I want to deliver the ultimate mnemonic device that was created thousands of years ago by a Greek orator and poet by the name of Simonides. He was said to have had the world's best memory as he remembered the names of all 30,000 inhabitants of ancient Athens in around 500 BC. The way Simonides would memorize a speech was based on something called loci. These days, people call it a memory palace. I'm going to talk about it as a memory map. And so what Simonides would do is he would take the first chunk, the first thought of his speech, and stand on the front steps of the building where he was going to present. And he would create an image for the first point that he was going to make, and then connect that to something about the first step that he was standing on. And he would move around the building, connecting the points of his speech to the locations, to the places in the building. I'm going to teach you how to do that. When Simonides would first get in front of his audience, he would say, in the first place, and today, that's where that expression comes from. In the first place, in the second place, connecting the points of your presentation with the places of a room or a building. Hence, the idea of a memory palace. So the idea of how you're going to do this is you're going to break your presentation into chunks. So rather than trying to remember word for word, you're going to remember point by point. So in the first chunk, you're going to distill that down to an image of some sort. And then you're going to take those images and you're going to put them in very specific places inside rooms of perhaps your house. And then you're going to mentally tour that room. You're going to look around that room and in your imagination, see the images that you placed in each one of those locations. So we're going to create a memory map. Now, every room has 10 locations. Now follow me. You've got four walls plus four corners plus the floor and the ceiling. So we're going to select one object on each wall in each corner on the ceiling and the floor to represent that part of the room. And then you're going to connect that object to the key point in your speech. So let me give you a practical example using the presentation that we just did here now. We're, you're going to walk into an imaginary living room. And when you walk into that living room, you're facing the wall where your TV set is. On that TV, the first point of my presentation was to talk about the history. So maybe you'll see a history book on your TV, or maybe it's tuned to the History Channel. And then you look next to the wall, and in the corner, there's a Lazy Boy recliner. And sitting in the Lazy Boy recliner is good old Simonides. And so in my room, the next place against the wall is a large plant. So you might see the roof collapsing and crushing that plant. Next to the plant, in the corner, is an end table. Now we're going to take that end table and we're going to move it out onto the front steps of the building where Simonides was giving his presentation. That represents the location or the loci technique, the places technique. Next to the end table along the wall is a sofa. And on that sofa, we're going to take a first place blue ribbon and we're going to attach it to the sofa where Simonides would say, in the first place, in the corner is a door. You're going to break that door down into chunks. So all we've got left are now chunks of wood. And so that represents taking your speech and breaking it down into chunks. So let's just do a quick review. When you looked at the TV, you saw that on the TV was either the History Channel or the History Book. And then you looked over in the corner, and in the corner was Simonides sitting in the easy chair. And then you looked at the plant, and the roof collapsed on the plant. 
And then when you looked at the cor in the corner, you saw the end table and oh yeah, we moved that end table out onto the first step. And then the next place in the room was the sofa. And we put that first place ribbon on the sofa. And then we moved to the corner where the door was and we smashed the door into chunks that represent break your speech down into chunks. So that gives you a practical example of how to use one of the most ancient and also one of the most effective of all mnemonic devices when it comes to memorizing a speech. Well, as you can see, memorizing a speech has its pros and cons. By following the tips Matt and I provided, you can harness the power of memorization while avoiding its pitfalls. Remember, practice makes perfect and finding the right balance between memorization and improvisation is key to delivering a successful speech. Make sure to watch the video on your screen next for more tips on memorizing your speeches and presentations. And don't forget to subscribe for more tips on mastering your communication skills. We'll see you online soon.